Hi, my name is Dean Stickler and I work with Golden Paintworks. In this video, I'm going to explain and demonstrate some of the use of the Golden Paintworks soapstone and a couple of glazy mediums used as colored top coats. Soapstone is a smooth, trollable paste that can be colored to deep colors because there is very little white marble flour or other fillers to interfere with coloring. It dries to a very tough, washable surface, unlike, say, Venetian plaster, but it does not burnish very easily either. And because it's not very absorbent, it's ideal for top coating with a colored glaze to achieve a nice uniform look and finish. The glazes I'll be using as top coats are glazing medium and glazing gel. Now glazing medium is a thick clear liquid and glazing gel is a clear trollable gel. I'll add a little metallic color into each and show you how they are applied and then you'll see the final look. Here's a small sample of the finished look. I always encourage you to do a sample first to verify the look you want in the room where it will be installed. You could also experiment with a variety of colors. You see how the color shifts depending on what kind of light hits it. it. Makes for a very interesting finish. The soapstone color I'm going to demonstrate with is called pebble, which is a light warm gray. You can do this technique with any color or color combination. Now I can use either a taping knife or a trowel to apply this texture, but I think a taping knife will, will show what I'm doing a little more clearly. The surface here, behind me is, has been painted with a flat paint in the same color as the pebble colored soapstone. I'll dip into the colored soapstone with a three inch spackling knife, putty knife, and I'll spread it with a six inch taping knife. Now you can use any size knife that you're comfortable with using. So we'll get started. First lay down the texture to about four or five square feet. I'll go back into it and level it out. Make sure it has about the same thickness all the way through. Thick enough you don't see the base coat coming through, but um, thin enough that you, it won't leave huge ridges. And I'm going back into it again and I'm starting to texture it. I'm starting the blade from the outside of the texture and pulling it to the inside and then floating it off the surface. So I always start from the outside, pull it in, float it, or feather it off the surface. What that does is it leaves an organic looking ripple within the texture. We want to create this very, very light texture throughout the finish across the entire wall surface. This goes slow at first, but soon you'll develop a rhythm so it makes it much easier to continue across the entire surface to create a nice uniform texture. You want to finish off one area at a time because you can see on the right uh, where I had started is the texture is already drying. Uh, the tendency would be then to go back in with more texture to try to fill that in when actuality it's already finished. So finish off one area before you move on to the next so you don't spend all the time going back over your finish. Here's what the texture should look like when it's dry. I've divided the soapstone texture behind me in two, and I'm going to apply glazing gel on one side and glazing medium on the other. I'm going to color them with a metallic paint color called Cashmere by Golden Paintworks. Now I have four ounces of each product here in front of me. An ounce equals two tablespoons, so I have eight tablespoons of product in each one of these containers. I want to make up a perfect eight to one ratio, that's eight parts glazing gel or glazing medium to one part paint. So I'll add in one tablespoon of metallic paint into each one of the containers. This will leave me the right kind of transparency that I want for the overglaze. Now you can use any kind of paint for this, including acrylic paint. Stir them up real well. I'm going to apply both of the products with a trowel or a spatula again. I might as well just stay with my taping knife, the six inch taping knife, although a trowel works just as well. I want to work on small areas at a time. Okay, so this is well mixed up. It doesn't take very much. A little bit of this goes a long ways. Okay. Just a small amount like that. 
and I want to work on one section at a time and take it off completely. You want to make sure you complete one section before you go off into the next. So clean off all your excess before you move on to the next section. If you let the, if you let the glazing gel dry too long, it'll start to tear. So your best bet is just to let it go ahead and dry for about 30 minutes, then go back in and fill in any spots you might have missed. I'll go ahead and let this set up and uh, just for about 20 minutes I'll go back in and fill in any areas that I might have missed. Okay, the glazing gel is now dried. I pulled off the tape. I'm going to put the uh, glazing medium on this side. Now I'm not going to tape this off because you want to keep masking tape off of the glazing gel for about a week after you apply it. It'll rip it right off until it's cured. Uh, now, to apply the glazing medium, I'm going to use a brush because obviously it's too thin to apply it with a trowel. So you just want to put on a small patch at a time, like that. Then take your taping knife or trowel and just start spreading it around. I'm just going to go right up to this one here and pull it out like this. If you're working on a very large surface, you can go ahead and use, say, a four inch roller. That'd be fine. You don't have to work quite so quickly with the glazing medium because it does take a long time to dry. It's a little bit easier. Okay, and done. Both of the colored mediums are now completely dry. You can see the full effects, both the glazing gel and the glazing medium. The glazing gel leaves a lot more of the metallic paint on the surface, and the glazing, gel, uh, glazing medium, while easier to apply, leaves a more of a thin, well, glaze over the surface. If you want a high shine or a high polish, I just trowel on another coat of the clear glazing gel. And if you want a little bit more even finish, in other words, reduce some of this patchiness and maybe reduce the sheen, you can run a coat of clear acrylic varnish over the tops of it. Now, either way, you see you have plenty of options to create some beautiful finishes. So experiment, have fun, and thanks for watching.